2008 BAP macro FRQ number three, GDP CPI question, it looks like. Um, Gala Land produces three goods, bread, water, and fruit. They give us the output. They give us the price. Calculate this year's nominal GDP. So know that nominal GDP is simply price times quantity, right? So we're going to for 400 times 6, 1,000 times 2, and 8 times 2, uh, 6 times 4, 2,016. Is that 6,000, I think? $6,000? All right. Uh, assume that in Gala Land, the GDP deflator, which is the price index, recognize that the deflator, the CPI, and if they use the word a price index, these are all just really the same thing. They're all measurements of inflation. They're a little different. Obviously, this is like a broad category. Both of these are price indexes. Your CPI is what we call a market basket of goods. It is goods that only consumers would buy, right? So there's no 18 wheelers in here. There's no tractors. Uh, the deflator is all goods and services in society. So these are both just measures. Um, this one obviously is very broad, measures everything in society. This measures only what consumers buy. It is that market basket of good, or maybe we could call it a specific um, basket or group of goods. Um, they've used, they've talked about it in different ways. Just know they're all really the kind of, kind of the same thing there. Assume that Galen and the deflator is 100 in the base year. Is it always is 100 in the base year and 150 this year? Uh, the inflation rate expressed as a percentage between the base year and this year. So obviously if we have 100 and we go from 150, recognize that that's easy to do as 50%. You could have used the formula new minus old divided by old times 100. The new would have been the 150 minus the old, which is 100, which would have given you 50 over old, which would have been 100. Oops, not 500. Let's get rid of that. 50 divided by 100 um, times 100, right? Times 100, which would have given you 50%. So just know that that's pretty easy to do. Obviously, if your year one was 100 and your year two is 150 for a CPI or deflator or whatever, again, that's easy to recognize as 50%. But if year three was 155, you cannot just go from 50 to 55. Uh, and it would not be 5%. So make sure you recognize that the first from year one, the base year to year two, we can always, that's easy to do. But year three, you'd have to use this new minus old divided by old times 100 formula or whatever formula. Obviously, this is five out of 150. Uh, and that is definitely not 5%. So uh, just to understand that, hopefully it'll help. 50% uh, here. And I think they're asking for our, this year's real GDP. Well, we know our nominal. I think the formula could be nominal GDP divided by your price index um, times 100 should give you your real GDP here. So it looks like uh, 600 over 150 times 100. And that should give you 4,000. Make sure the numbers make sense to you. Obviously, if we had a GDP, a real GDP of 4,000, uh, and the inflation rate was 50%, well, 50% of 4,000 is 2,000. That Those two together give us 6,000. Make sure the numbers make sense to you, right? That obviously, um, they should not be strange in that when you look at them and make sense of them. So this year's real GDP is 4,000. Uh, since the base year, workers have received 20% increase in their nominal wages. If workers face the same inflation that you calculated in BI, what has happened to their real wages? So we know our nominal wage is the wage you actually get paid. 
you got a 20% increase. Yay! But inflation went up by 50%. The price of everything went up by 50%. Your real wage just went down by 30%. I hope you can see that, right? Obviously, you get an increase in your wage, but then the price of everything goes up by a greater percentage. It's got to kick your real wage down. Anytime price levels go up, uh, real wages have to fall. I hope that makes sense. Uh, and we would just explain it like that, exactly like that, in that um, the price of inflation of 50% is greater than the nominal wage increase. Therefore, your purchasing power purchasing power of workers has decreased. Their real wage has gone down. They can buy less stuff. All right, D, if the GDP deflator in Gala land increases unexpectedly, would a borrower with a fixed interest rate loan be better off or worse off? So if your GDP deflator has increased, that implies that there's been inflation. Um, would a borrower with a fixed interest rate of loan? So what we tend to know is that if you borrow money at, let's say, 5%, but then the inflation rate goes up to 10%, um, this would benefit uh, the borrower. This would harm the lender. The lender would uh, be worse off. If I could spell worse, worse off, because the idea here is that the lender is now being paid back. And the way we would explain that is being paid back with dollars that have lower purchasing power. Right. In essence here, if I loan money at 5%, but inflation went up at my real interest rate, remember when the price level goes up, real numbers go down, my real interest rate would be 5%. I would have actually lost money on loaning um, at a 5% rate because the price of everything went up by 10%. And when they pay me back that money, all I'm getting is that extra 5%. I can buy less stuff on this side than I could when I loaned it out to this person. So we say the borrower benefits because their purchasing power was high when they borrowed the money. Their purchasing power was greater um, when they actually took the loan out than when they have to pay it back. Um, so it's better off. I hope that makes sense. Um, there is a cheat sheet on the, on the blog. Make sure you find this cheat sheet about losers and winners. Uh, it helps you to be able to put the hardest part about this is not figuring it out. It's knowing how exactly to say it using that phrase purchasing power, which the college board likes so much. All right, guys. Thanks 